rising and people are like, be happy. Because it shows that you are straight. You are doing what you are meant to be doing. Not everybody likes Jesus Christ. So if everybody likes you, there is a problem somewhere. I want you to know that there will always be offense. But we must do something about offense. The Bible says, woe unto you that offense comes. So don't let anybody give you reason to be offended. I don't want it to be woe to me. So if you are strategizing offense towards me, I will not be offended. I refuse to be offended because I don't want woe to come on me. Because you see, the Bible says the devil is crafty. He will just bring something that will upset you. And if you are offended, then that W-O-E is for you. So why don't we choose not to be offended? That is laying down our body. That is living free. That is enjoying life. It's not as if she doesn't get offended, but she chooses, chooses to be happy. Why would somebody make your life miserable? Don't give them the liberty. We are not getting younger, and we should be wiser. We should take care of ourselves. Because if you are not happy and you are allowing the devil to sow, to sow um, bitterness, confusion, doubts in your heart, I tell you, it's going to diminish your numbers of days. Because it will eat it all. So to live long, be joyful, be happy, refuse offense. You said the young girls should be able to come towards us and say, Grandma, we know you will have the advice. But if it's a grandma that is full of this person offended me, this person said I didn't greet me, this person stepped from my soul, this person, her laughter was too much, I don't know what she did. Why do you rest? Why do you rest? It's practically all of us to be in retirement. Retirement from what? From bodies. We, have, we should be, I, I, when I give my definition of retirement, I say that is when you are on your own. You are in control of your life now. I remember when, when, when um, I called home many years after I've left, I'm mean, married and everything, and you will hear your younger sister say, ah, daddy has changed, oh, mommy has changed. They changed it because they leave some things behind, because wisdom age has taught them. So refuse to be offended. If there's anything you are taking out from this meeting, Offense might be waiting outside the door. Maybe the link the reception is there will say, well, why did you slam the door? Meanwhile, it wasn't you, it was the wind. You smile. <laughs> you smile. The Bible says, count it all joy. It's a temptation when we fall into diverse temptation. Hallelujah. The grace of God is available, but we won't abuse it. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit steps at that side and just feel like, okay, since you want to run the business yourself. But he's telling us what to do. That is the glory we share. That is the unity that people see in Seti and us as a corporate body and they love to be among us. Sister Nick Elvibado was sharing with me, the Nick Elvibado. She said, people are just saying, I want to be part of what you are doing. That place where you go, please take my wife. Because this ministry is about God's business. Like I told you, I was, I was telling somebody a few days ago, I said, if I don't get it right, God can kick me out because I didn't form this ministry. I was just employed to do what God, you know, as a spirit would not do. So I see myself as an, uh, an employee. Yeah. So grudge, grudge implies somebody offends you. Malice, yes. Malice. You know some people are keeping malice with some people, they can't even place their hand like this. Why are you not happy with that lady? What? They don't know. Imagine, and it's not worth it. Some people, they don't even just want to see your face. Stop finding out why they don't like you. It's not important. <laughs> Count it all joy that they don't even like you. At least you can take that. At least it's not everybody are pleasing. Because if you are pleasing everybody, you are not like Jesus. Because some people want you to do what is not right. And you want to do it so that you can be their good book. That means you are compromising. So hatred, fight, and everything can lead to, to grudge. So we rather not fight, we rather not hate anybody, we we'll just be like Jesus. And we take criticism in good faith. You know, a friend of mine was watching my video in Canada. And thank God for God. And um, God is good. So she watched the video. We've not spoken in a long time because we were actually in um, uni together. So she fell back. She said, at least you will try and smile. And I left it, I ignored it, and I was like, and as I dropped my phone, I was going. The Holy Spirit said, go back and thank her. At least you know better that next time you are shooting your video, you smile. 
And he said, I had to text her and say, Ah, oh, Gildo, thank you so much for this positive criticism. And she was happy to give back to her, and I knew she would tell me more. But initially, the first one was like, You didn't even did congratulate or like say, Wow, well, well, you said I didn't even smile. You know? So let us take everything in good faith. Because, you see, we don't want to discourage our destiny helper. So don't let us be offended. Just take things in good faith. When we were teenagers and we were young adults, yeah, we can prove to people we are not stupid. But it's not worth it. If anybody sees you today and think you are stupid, they should be afraid that you didn't react. This one that says, do I didn't react? Am I in trouble? But if you have tried to say, that's all she can do. And the Holy Spirit said, vengeance is his. Let him do the fighting. Praise the Lord. So, at 6, um, six one. I read from the NLT, it says, But the believers rapidly multiplied, and there was rumbling of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. See, these are two camps now. The Greek-speaking and the Hebrew-speaking saying, Oh, they are being discriminated against. They would always be your friends. And this ministry, thank God for this ministry, we've not, Sister Shelley was saying it, no rancor, and there will never be rancor. Amen. But we cannot avoid misunderstanding sometimes. So what God is trying to, what the Bible is trying to show us is that you can't avoid offense. He says, but do something. Philippians 2, 14 says, do everything without grumbling, grumbling or arguing. Ask for grace. Ask for strength. You don't need arguments. So the reason why offense comes is for two reasons, which we dealt with last year. Is because of stereotyping. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stereotyping and prejudice. Stereotype, if you remember very well, is when you group a set of people and you just generalize and, you know, or general perception. So prejudice is now a case of individual. Oh, you see Sister Yemi, see, she's not born again, she has reborn. <laughs> Some people will say and say she's not yeah. born again, she, she has reborn. She can't be, be how can her, how can that lady uh -huh. be, she's even wearing trousers, no, yeah. she can't be, she painted her nails, no, she can't be born again. So please, let us shine our eyes, let us not, you see, let us not be like people of the world, because we are not even children again. So avoid prejudice, prejudice is defined, it says it's referred to as positive or negative evaluation of another person or individual based on perception or awareness. Perception, you know, perception and awareness. Most times it is developed from personal experience, assumption or speculation. Prejudice implies prejudgment of, of the victim based on preconception. So let's go to John 6, 20, John 6 42. It says, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can we now say he comes from heaven? <laughs> son of a carpenter. <laughs> they judge him, they size him, that no. The fact that she's a, he's a son of a carpenter, mm -mm, mm -mm, forget it. Everything he's doing is fake. Carpenter. <laughs> so yeah. forgiveness is what we can do. Since the, we've been told our friends is unavoidable, we can only continue to forgive and forgive and forget. So forgiveness, is definition has it, is a demonstration of mercy. Demonstration of mercy and compassion. Demonstration of kindness. Demonstration of pardon. Demonstration of tolerance and understanding. And do you know one thing I like, apart from all these ones I've mentioned? It says demonstration of absolution. Absolution means that you have forgotten it, forgiven him absolutely. Absolution. There are some of us here who mention it and I admire you. Because we work in a grace. Because there are things that have come to my information that happened to you or that your spouse did to you, but you have covered your husband's shame. And I don't think you want to, you want to talk about it or, or you want to make a big deal. Some people will just go to the archive and say, you did this, you remember, you did this. It's not necessary. Because Christ forgave you. I don't care what your spouse has done. You did worse to Jesus. I don't care. I don't care. I don't know how bad it is that you cannot pardon. I'm talking to myself too. He says it's a 
a demonstration of mercy. Mercy endures. Mercy endures. And we are, if we are in the nature of God, mercy should be our second name. Mm -hmm. And he says, how many times? He says, 70 times, 70 times. Just keep forgiving. His grace is sufficient for us. Mm -hmm. So he says, we must show tolerance. Bear it. You know why it happened? Because you can handle it. Not because you deserve it. Mm. First Corinthians chapter 10 and 13 says to us, it says, any temptation that is more than you, mm. it will come. You just pass the test, a test of mercy, and God takes it from you that, well done. You have an idea of what I went through. Keep no record. It just shows that you, are, you, are, you have grown. You are developing muscles. It's not easy, yes, but forget about it. Let's cover our spouse's shame. Don't let us, I wish some people were here, men also. Some men, I wish they were seated here. Titus 3, 4 to 5 says, But when the kindness and the love of the Lord our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things that we have done, but because of His mercy. Because of His mercy. Mercy must be part of our life. Just look out for people you can show mercy to. Let it be an hobby. God just showed her mercy. He is just grabbing the load from her and saying, will you give me? Will you let me? It's mercy. Because from what I picked in the realm of the Spirit, it's not the first time that the Lord was willing to take it away. But mercy. I don't care how many times your husband has offended I'm not talking of mother-in-laws now. Please. Mercy endures. Romans 12, 18 says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone, as it depends on you. Because some people will say, I, I don't want to live at peace with you. But as long as it depends on you, live at peace. You will greet some people, they will say, don't greet me. Is there any problem? <laughs> There are people like that. They are pushing you. But as they push you, you push the wall back. And that is why you are a Christian. And that's why you are not a baby. And that is why you are you are called a child of God. Because what he, go, he went through, you don't want to taste out of it. You are joking. Because you, his DNA is in your blood now. You must suffer what he suffered. Christianity is not just the, the, oh, the blessing, blessing, blessing. It's a package. Sister Lola said we should exercise. Spiritual ex exercises are also helping us. And that is why, like Sister Rebecca said, young adults can come to her and say, Mama, I know you, you are very versatile in this area because you've been there. But if you are shaping away from responsibility, they don't see you qualified. Once it's, I've been, uh, uh, someone was talking to me yesterday, they said, oh, I've talked to that person, but I don't think that person has offered me what I want. We, would, what, we don't want to be that kind of big mommy. Ephesians 4, 26, I'm reading from the NLT, it says, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Because it might be a setup. You know when you are angry, you say some things and you say, I wish I never said. So it says, don't let anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. Mm -hmm. That means don't go to bed angry. Mm -hmm. It's a command. Mm -hmm. It's a command. You might show you are offended, but let the person know that me, I released you since last night. I don't know what you are talking about. I have James 3.13 here. James 3.13 says, it says, are there any of you who are wise and understanding? I, you are to prove it. Because we pray for wisdom. We say, if you are wise and understanding, you are to prove it. How do you prove it? Say, prove it by your good life and by your good deeds performed with humanity and wisdom. Praise the Lord. So that is what God is enjoining us to do today. To ensure that we just let go, let go and enjoy life. Be free as a bird. Let your spirit be. Don't let anybody cage your spirit. Don't let them. Because you see, the Bible, let us know that the devil is so crafty. What he can do is just organize a fix for you. That somebody will offend you and that piece is stolen. Mm -hmm. But why would you play into the devil's hand? Nobody should sit here today must allow the devil to use somebody. By the time you resist it, the person shows hatred, you show love. 
the, the Bible says, says, resist the devil and he will flee. Mm -hmm. If it's not working, you have to look for somewhere else where his strategy can go. Praise the Lord. I think that brings me to the end of my message. So thank you for listening. And then